Hello everybody, my name is Carol, this is my channel So Carol. This is Hashtag Friday Sews and I have so much to share with you this week. And I know I said that last week, but I have really been sewing up a storm again this week. And boy, do my machines need me to go on holiday. <laughs> So hashtag Friday Sews, as we all know, but in case you're new on the scene, it was started by the lovely Jen from Today and Jen's Sewing Room, the ultimate sewing queen, who designed this kind of hashtag so we're easy to find. Normally on a Friday or a Saturday, we're just reporting back from our sewing rooms and what we've been up to, whether it be in life or sewing or purchasing. So yeah, thank you Jen for creating that. Now I have piles of stuff all around me to show you and I really don't know where to start first. I'll start with the uh, crafty bits and then I'll move on to the uh, clothing I think. I intended last weekend to take my sewing machine down to our new holiday home so I can make some bottle bags and I did in fact do that. Now this was a kind of pattern that I put together. Um, I did put out a video I think last year saying how to make these. They're quilted, they've got some fleece inside. The idea is to, as you can see, I've got a tall chilies bottle in there, but you could also put a water bottle, a little flask, and you obviously you wear them around your body. Now I've also added this time, just into one of the seams, I just added a little clip. Um, I've done the same on that one as well, just in case you want to hang it on a bag or on a, a man wants to hand it, um, hang it off his jeans or something. But yeah, I was really pleased I got those two done. I then went on to make another, I'm going to call them body bags. From the, oh, Does that sound awful? Um, not bum bags or fanny packs, but yeah, because they're sort of worn over your chest now, aren't they? So this was the last one I've made for my daughter and it's got Ariel on it. Um, I absolutely love this. It came out so well. Um, got the zip. Uh, this was a pattern, I'll put the link below, it's a free pattern that you can just download. Um, I did add a pocket in like I've done before, a little zip pocket into the, the back kind of side of it, um, just for cards or little bits and bobs. But that's it, I I think I made about five of these, I think. Um, yeah, I was really pleased with that, how that came out and she loves it. I want to say a massive thank you to a fellow YouTuber now this lady, the lovely Mary from Love My Crafts, uh, a few weeks ago now she started a channel and I mentioned it on my Friday shows and a lot of you lovely people went over to her channel and subscribed. Um, I was so pleased, thank you so much for doing that. But what has she sent me? She has sent me this absolutely marvellous postcard. I've never seen anything like it before. It is a quilted postcard. So, um, I mean, look at that. That's just awesome, isn't it? Um, you've got the variegated thread. She's got all the Disney bits and bobs and little stitch poking out there. All the Disney quilted onto a card and just a lovely little message on the back. I was absolutely so thrilled to receive this. As I said, I've never seen anything like it before. It's a fantastic idea. Um, so a lot of work had gone into that. So thank you very much, Mary. I really, really appreciate that. If you haven't checked out Mary's channel yet, I'm gonna put her link um, down below and I will send a few more people over to see her. She's such a great uh, sewist and she's a, quite a good fun as well. She's got a great sense of humor. So um, even when things go wrong, she keeps her sense of humor. So thank you, Mary. So on my list to do this week was uh, a dress for my daughter and I showed you the fabric last week. Um, it was a really a lot of viscose jersey. And what I realized was when I cut it out, how heavy this material was. It was almost like a double brush poly, but however. So the dress she had in mind, she bought a dress from Vinted and wanted that similar style. And I think I told you last week, it's like the staycation dress. Well, I didn't want to buy a pattern, so I traced it off for her. So I literally pinned down the dress and drew around it and then added seam allowance. It had gathering on the sleeves and it was gathered at the waist. So 
I made it all up. I've got a picture I'll put in here. It's not a very good picture. But when she came and saw it, she didn't like it really. I have to say, it was too much fabric and it actually looked too old fashioned for her. She, now, you sewists out there will know and appreciate this, but she had these frills around the bottom of the sleeve and you know how long that takes to do. She wanted me to cut them off. <laughs> So all my hard work of gathering and working out, actually, because I didn't have the pattern, so I had to work out the size of the pattern piece and gather it all. Yeah, she wanted them cut off. So we did cut them off and it looked so much better afterwards. Also the waist, um, it just seemed a bit too tent-like, so I've run some elastic very lightly round the waist. So I finished that last night. She came over and at the same time she made some Disney Mickey Mouse ears to go with it using the bow um, fabric. It looked really good actually. So I'm going to put a picture in now of her wearing it but I don't actually have the dress to show you because she took it away. So yeah, um, that was dress was a lot of hard work. Easy enough to draw off but it was just too heavy in that particular fabric. So obviously taking the length and removing those gathered sleeves um, I had to throw them away um, yeah made it a lot better the second thing I wanted to make was a dress for myself I had this beautiful viscose jersey here and nowhere near the weight of that other one so it just shows how different fabric contents make such a difference so I managed to make the magic dress that I really wanted to make just one more little thing um, for my holiday now I didn't I only had a meter and a half of this so I could make the shorter version and not the full-on version but I am really really pleased with it I absolutely love this fabric I always love the pattern I do go up on the size uh, that I would do normally um, that's got a rolled hem you don't do a neck band for this you do a, a, just a turnover hem I always raise the ties on the side just by an inch as well just so so they're not around the waist they're kind of up here a little bit but I am super pleased I lower the split a bit as well because it's a bit too high for daytime because this is a daytime dress um so yeah so another winner for new look 6650 and if you have this pattern in your sash and you haven't braided it yet then I would encourage you to do it but do size up and one more thing I do is it has got fisheye darts down the back. I leave those off because um, it's a jersey and it just gives you a bit more room. So two dresses. I actually got those two dresses done, which I cannot believe. Last year, I made a dress out of this lightweight viscose. It was, um, I have to put the pattern up because I haven't got it with me, um, but I was never very happy with the dress. The fabric was very light and in the sides of it, it had pockets and they always stuck out. And it was just something the way it sort of clung over my tummy that I was never very comfortable with, but I did love the fabric and I loved the top. So what I have done, I have turned it into a top. I have cut it just under where the pockets were and I sewed up where the pockets used to be. So cut it under there and I have just hemmed it on my cover stitch machine and now I have a very pretty little top. It's got a tie there, I don't know, it's hard to see. So that's going with me. I was really pleased because it was a beautiful fabric and I just wasn't comfortable wearing the dress. So yeah, now I've got a nice little top to wear. Now, the surprise of the week was, last Sunday I put out a video, um, I did a collab with the lovely Izzy from Dizzy Quilts and Sews, we were searching for our Perfect Fit t-shirt because we always have trouble with lines here. So the video was showing us battling with the Palmer Pletch system. I did a McCall's pattern but there is a Butterick that's exactly the same. Um, so we went to a lot of details. I did an FBA on mine and it still didn't come out right. One of them was okay, one wasn't. A lot of effort went into those t-shirts. So this week, I, um, because it's a hashtag so frugal in March and I wanted just to make something up before I went away, Stephanie Farrell from Farrell Focus, she linked to, um, on her video for so frugal, she mentioned this Malva 
T. So free pattern, it's just one where you sign up to a newsletter and you get the free pattern. Um, and it was a PDF and I printed it and I stuck it together and I didn't moan once. So <laughs> you'll be proud of me. So I thought I'd make it up in this fabric. You would not believe that this is perfect on me. I have got the tiniest little line. I cannot believe it. But there's something about the shape of it. I just made, a, I think I made a size four or a six. I had no idea what size to go for. Um, yep, I made a size six. And I was actually underesting and mating it, but um, I made it up and I thought, oh, I'll just try it on, see what it's like. See how many lines I've got here. <laughs> I didn't. So all that work I went into a week ago and lo and behold, a nice free PDF pattern and it fits me beautifully and it's a lovely shape. The only thing I would say and what I didn't spot in the photo is how cropped those sleeves are. Once upon a time I'd have been happy with that but now I just, I just want a little bit more coverage as I get older. So I didn't notice that till after I made it up so I have added some sleeve bands. I literally cut two rectangles the width of the sleeve piece I couldn't recut the sleeves because I just had no fabric left but and then I didn't gather them or anything they they fit exactly so I don't think you can kind of notice it but yeah so I've got some sleeve bands on the end but that's all I did and hemmed it and I am so pleased with it this pattern will be staying with me because it's got the look that I was looking for in a t-shirt another on my to-do list was eight Disney embroideries. So this is on my Disney embroidery machine, my brother machine, which has been amazing. That um, pool thing has had to go through the mill with me the last, and it, that's what I said. Um, they really want me to go on holiday, my machines now, because they've worked so hard. But so I had six t-shirts for the boys. So I had three for the little one, three for the big one and um, I managed to do all those designs that they wanted on there. I'll put a picture because that's uh, already packed in someone's suitcase. And then I did two for my husband because he felt left out. So these are t-shirts that I bought um, to make it a bit quicker. But <sighs> so I started off, my husband wanted Pluto. So I put it in the middle and I was really pleased because I matched the Pluto's collar to the red showed it to my husband, I was so excited, look how it's come out. He said, I didn't want the design there, I wanted it here. And I had to say, well, tough, because it's there now. Um, and I will do the next one for you there, but I can't believe it, I was so excited and he was miffed that I put it in the wrong place. So then I went on to do another one for him and I put it on the side and it was uh, Buzz and Woody. Um, didn't, had I thought about it, I should have done it the other way around because really the jeans don't come out well, but you live and learn, don't you? But yeah, so he's got that on the side this time. So I think I worked out um, just recently, I've done 14 Disney designs on t-shirts, whether it be on a dress, um, t-shirts for the boys. Oh, and that's not counting the ones I did for me as well. So I have done it a lot recently. And I have to say, I haven't had an issue with one of them. Um, I recently put out a video saying how I worked out which is best for me to embroider on jersey. Might not be the right way, and certainly will be, people will be doing it differently. But I have to say, I've done 14 designs without any issues at all. So if you're unsure about embroidery, and you're on Jersey and you're not sure, then it, it, it is worth having a look at that and just to see how I do it. Um, because proof is in the pudding, isn't it, really? Might not be the right way, I'm not an expert, but it has worked. Next week, I will be putting out a video on the results of my fabric wheel. Um, this was this beautiful fabric here. So I made that up this week and I will put the video out next week. I am so happy about that. Um, you can see I've taken the uh, thing off because um, it's had to be redone for next time. But yeah, I am so pleased with the results. I will be excited to hear what you think. So that'll be uh, next week. 
um, as I've said a thousand times, we are away for the next couple of weeks, so I probably won't be doing hashtag Friday sews. Um, as I say, I've got that video coming out next week, and I may put another one out, but um, I'm going to take a break from Friday sews. You never know, um, I might put some video up of uh, the lovely people that I'm planning to meet. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take a break from hashtag Friday sews. Holiday plans. My fingers can never keep still. So I've got two things in mind to do. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is a lovely bag that Adam made me quite a while ago now. But it's going to be very useful because in here I have got some wool. Sorry, not wool, it's crochet yarn. Um, cotton yarn and a crochet hook because on the plane I intend to do some crochet. Now I haven't done it for quite a few years. I did loads for the boys when they were tiny but Tiffany from Hoosier Handmade recently a couple of weeks ago put um, mentioned that she'd be making some very simple crochet pot holders and I looked at that and I thought that is such a lovely little project just to sit on a plane and do. Um, I'll put the link down below to the video where she's mentioned it and she also links to a YouTube tutorial for it. But very simple, hopefully, uh, crochet tutorial on there. And she suggests obviously using 100% cotton yarn. So I had these in my um, cupboard. Look at that one, I've never used. A um, couple of colours. She had shown some lovely variegated yeah, but I cannot find that anywhere. I cannot find 100% cotton sort of pretty colours. So whether I end up putting stripes in this thing or not, or just making them plain, I'm not sure. But yeah, so thank you, Adam. This lovely bag um, is going to be going on the plane with me. There is one other project that I've done years and years ago, and I found this scrappy bit of photocopy, and I did do them on a flight once, and it was these little what do they call them, quiche style coasters. So the idea was you had the fabric circles and you sewed blanket stitch around the side and then you did some crocheting around the edge to make little drinks coasters. Now I remember doing these and they were absolutely fantastic. Just a lovely little thing to do on the plane. So this, oh, it's from a sewing magazine, but I, sew mag, but I, I don't know uh, where or when. So I don't know if you can still get it, but um, if I've done enough of the pup holders, then I may take cut up some fat squares and um, yeah, I may do that as well because I remember that being quite simple. But um, yeah, uh, if I do them, um, obviously I'll report back to you and then uh, maybe just describe how I did them if you're interested. But yeah, I managed to find that, so I was, I was really pleased about that. I cannot sit for nine hours on a plane without doing anything and I'm not like others where they can watch film after film after film um, and just be sat there like a zombie. I need to be to be doing something so I've now got my projects to go. Obviously I know that I've been making lots of things for our holiday, I've been talking lots about the holiday but when I come back I really want to get on with some spring projects. I've got a few things in my mind already that I want to be making. I um, I'm actually wearing them so I'll stand up but I made a pair of kind of jeans a few weeks ago um, I'll put the down below I'll stand up and then you'll see them I don't know if you remember these jeans with these uh, pockets here waistband pockets and these pockets at the back high-waisted and they're kind of a flared <laughs> show you that kind of a flared bottom I wear these things all the time and I get really good comments about them so I want to use that pattern again, make another spring kind of pair because they're just lovely to wear. I may try and make them in a linen or a linen mix. Um, I also want to make a, another pair of my carpenter type jeans. Um, they're kind of my, uh, when Largo Cargos came out, I kind of copied them by mishmashing three patterns together. And I want to make another of those, um, but in a light colour denim for spring. I want to make some tops. I showed you a few weeks ago a Stylark uh, Ralph polo top. Um, I want to get on and do that. So you can see I'm already in my head planning all the lovely things that I want to make when I come back from holiday. So do join me on hashtag Friday Sews in a couple of weeks because I will still have lots of things to make. I, I never run out of ideas.
Last weekend, we thoroughly enjoyed ourselves down in our new holiday home. The weather was rotten on the Saturday, but it wasn't so bad on the Sunday. We did a lovely little walk um, on the Saturday, and then we had lunch in a typical Dorset local little pub. Um, it was absolutely beautiful. So I will uh, put some pictures of, of all that. Um, and then we walked down to the beach, um, um, to West Bay. Uh, West Bay is actually known for, there was a very famous BBC crime series Broadchurch and that was filmed there. But yeah, we walked, did some walking around there. I had, which I almost nearly forgot about, my spring concert with my uh, orchestra on Monday. Now, I always keep quiet about this because this particular one, I had a couple of solos to do and I am not a confident player at all. So if I ever got something where I'm a bit exposed or I've got a solo, I never let anybody come and watch me play because if I know someone's in that audience that knows me, then I just go completely to pot. So obviously nobody came, I played the solos, played the bits and they were absolutely fine and then I was relieved and but then I was disappointed that no one had else had heard from my family <laughs> can't win with me but yeah I I'm, I'm so shy I I don't like playing out an oboe is a very loud instrument and I don't like really playing out but yeah when I've got a solo or something I am a nervous wreck but that is done um, and we're going to be on to another term with some more music I'm just hoping next time round it's not so stressful <clears throat> So we're off now for a couple of weeks. Um, I'm so excited. I've got my spare suitcase ready to uh, pick up some fabrics in Joanne's and any bits in Hobby Lobby. Um, it's going to be marvellous meeting up with a few people over there and there will be photos, I'm sure, and there will be some footage if we remember to take some. Thank you so much for joining me. If you've enjoyed this video, it would be amazing if you could just click the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I don't often ask, because um, I get shy about asking, but yeah, if you could, that'd be brilliant. Have a wonderful couple of weeks. Um, have an amazing weekend. Hope you get loads of sewing done. Spring is truly on its way, so we should all be thinking about our spring wardrobes and spring projects. I will also say have a happy Easter. Um, because that is next weekend. Um, I look forward to seeing you when I come back. So thank you very much and goodbye for now.